Hey, what's up everybody? My name is TrophyNet and welcome back to The Witcher 3 on the Dead March difficulty. Today, we're gonna do a few Witcher contracts and um, in between recordings I was uh, trying to clean up the rest of the monster nests in the Velen region that I missed and I came by this village, Byways, and uh, it was overrun with ghouls and once I slayed the ghouls, those men over there came out of that hut and uh, they started a rather awkward conversation about what happened to the dead Nilfgaardian soldiers over here. They claimed the uh, the ghouls came and killed the soldiers, but we have our doubts about that. So let's examine the place here a bit to see what actually a happened. Fight. Didn't stand a chance. So right now this looks like dogs. Thrown to the ground with great force, internal hemorrhaging. Still sounds like ghouls did that. Jaws but strong enough to crush armor. Scent maybe of not ghouls still though. strong. Ought to follow it. Okay, so let's follow that scent. It seems like we have a bigger. Okay, it's leading to that house. There's nothing there. Tracks hmm. lead to this house. What happened here? What do you mean? What happened? Um, last time I'm asking, because you last don't want to say anything, do you? What happened to the Nilf Guardians? What's behind that door? What do I know? Listen, you. If you don't tell me everything you know, you could all die. Understand? Is that a burden you can live with? I don't think they care. There's tunnels beneath the village. Tunnels? Elven ruins. We scavenge them for trinkets, small treasures, sell them to Novigrad merchants. No one expected anything bad to come of it. We dug through some rubble, found a chamber. The beast slept inside. We felled the prop so the ceiling had collapse. Didn't bury the monster though. So you came into the ruin, started well ravaging the place, came across a beast. And then uh, kind of destroyed the beast's lair, if you want to say it like that. What did it look like? What did the monster look like? It were dark down below. Couldn't see. Oh, of So course. how did it kill the North Guardians? I ran. Couldn't watch it happen. Hmm. Okay, then. You have a key for this place? Give me the key to the door. You'd go in. No. Want to pour wax through its head, tell you your fortune. Now give me the key. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Gerald is becoming impatient a bit. You dug through to the monster's lair, then buried the entrance, but the Nilfgaardians opened it again to look for treasure. Beast killed the Black Ones and returned to its lair. You wanted to bury the corpses, but their stench lured ghouls to the village. Now I'm here. Sound about right? Tis as you say. Yes. I'm going down there. If I'm gone long, run. Barring the door, nailing it shut resolves nothing. There are other ways out of the tunnels. Gotta be. Well, I didn't come to this quest completely by accident, because I found this village before, but the ghouls were too high of a level for me uh, at the time. But right now, this is a level 22 quest. I'm level 23, so we should be able to uh, finish this. Well, it looks like something has been killed here, at least. can be lifted. Well, do so then. It's not that was really weird, but hey, if you can move boards around without any friction, so be it. So let's take the ladder down and let's see what kind of beast this is. It looks pretty bright down here. So another Armor dead pierced. Nest Guardian. Arteries torn open. An Ekimara. Oh, hibernated here till the great. Woke it. So when Akimara, well, Sarosti, what is Sarosti? Let's check that out. Sarosti, raiders of elven tombs either get rich quickly or die trying. The unsaid disintegrating temples and palaces hold priceless treasures, true. But within them, many a foul monster waits in deep slumber. Such was the case in byways, where a few peasants, unaware of the dangers they faced, awoke an unusually dangerous Akimara. 
The Witcher knew this monster would be no easy kill, that the vampire would quickly regenerate, that its blows would cause heavy bleeding, and that it was able to disappear into thin air. Yet he also knew he could overcome these advantages. He needed merely use the Erden and Quen signs and strike heavy blows. Oh, and avoid getting killed. So, levels Puffball, Vampire Oil, and Igni as well. It's weird that they uh, suggest Erden and Quen in the text, but not down below here. But we're gonna use Quen anyway. Uh, I'm gonna immediately equip that Vampire Oil as well. Which is pretty easy with the new uh, inventory system, so let's put it on the silver sword. And uh, continue on now, shall we? I'm gonna save as well. Okay, so let's go deeper into the cave, I presume. Although it looks like it's over there, maybe that goes up. Hello, why is it raining inside? It's still raining inside, oh god. You're looking fancy. Oh shit. This thing can teleport a lot faster than the higher vampire we fought before. Holy shit! Whew. It doesn't care about the Igni. But I think the faster strikes will be better since we uh it's poisoned at the moment. Whew, that was one just in time. Holy shit! Poison again. Send the vampire oil and my uh, ability is doing its work. Let's finish it off. Okay. So, let's take a trophy. Ooh, blood aid. Not the sword and the Akimara trophy. This has been a while. Off with its head. Stab. So, an Akimara trophy. And now talk to Baitomir, which must be the guy that we were talking to. There's another chest here as well. Nothing to write home about, but... Hey, you know what they say about... Little things. I have to appreciate the little things. Anything inside of its lair? How deep does this go? Okay, it was just chilling with the mushrooms apparently. Uh, anything to the side here? Oh, another chest. An amethyst. Complete one at that, so uh, let's get back outside and I'll see you at Bytomir in a second. Hello sir, I got rid of your problem. Don't be so glum. Gods, he lives. Of course we live. Found an Akimara hibernating underground. It was old. Must have been asleep for centuries. And you were an dumb Akimara? enough to wake it up. Vampire, won't trouble you again. You cut off its head, drive a stake through its heart. Did what I had to. Don't go down into those tunnels anymore. Akimara aren't known to be loners. We didn't hire you. Still, seems you deserve a... You bet I do. Pay up. Ooh, Carol, calm down, Jesus. Farewell. I think he's still mad about the fact that you didn't uh, tell him what was going on immediately. So now we need to uh, return to the Nilfgaardian Patrol Commander. Ooh, Fearless Vampire Slayer, another trophy, hello. I'm doing my name justice, so I'm gonna head back to that Nilfgaardian Patrol Commander and tell him what happened to his soldiers as well, so see you there in a second. So in lovely Oroton we should be able to find the Nilfgaardian Patrol Commander, I think he's over there. Um, kinda looks like it, so there's soldiers over here, so 
Yeah, the guy over here. Without the helmet. What brings you here? Milan and Noran. Well, hear about the contract. It's Saw done. Your notice. Can anyone tell me about the monster? Wait a what? I can. The patrol has been lost. Somewhere along the south shore of Lake Windomer. We must know why. What makes this witcher's work? Some brickmakers live south of here. They call their village Byways. Almost empty now. Many have run away. They speak of a monster which kills. Love Redanians the accent, do by not the way. Control there. That would be foolish. And robbers do not attack Imperials. That would be even more foolish. This leaves one option. A monster. Well, you were right about ways. that. A vampire was terrorizing the village. That was a weird introduction since we were doing that already. This is why they did not return. Yes, it is. Eki Mari are tough, even for a group of soldiers. We will bury them with honors, as heroes. Your award, well deserved. Thank you. And, uh, no problem. So, the mystery of the byways murders complete. I'm gonna select another contract since we, well, we haven't been doing a whole lot in this episode, so I'm gonna do another one. So, next up, doors slamming shut, in which we'll uh, investigate a haunted mansion. That should be uh, exciting enough for the rest of the episode. So, uh, I'm gonna head there to see you guys at the haunted mansion in a minute. So, this is the haunted house. Yes, indeed. So, the Moldavi residence over here uh, is owned by Kurt Dygard, I think his name was. Uh, and this man has uh, complaints about this house being haunted. So, let's investigate. Um, let's go to the front door. We have the key from Mr. Dice Sword. That's a weird layout of a house. Another godling, maybe? Whole building shaking. But a spectre would have attacked me already. Is it shaking? I don't feel it shaking, but... Inhabitant clearly left in a hurry. So yeah, we kind of already know that. So let's check out the chest in the corner over here. Uh, let's just stray book, runestone, and a couple of nails. Might be able to use that for further... Uh, for another armor set in the future. Um... No rune stones. And a lot of books about Radovid. Nothing here. Ah, okay, that's a plant from outside poking through the wall. Never mind. I thought I already saw a ghost. Journal from the Moldavi residence. Huh. What a lovely home. I cannot believe we were able to buy it so cheaply. Valeria always had a keen mind for business. She haggled so fiercely the broker dropped his price by a third. Yeah, I would want that uh, skill. Incredible! Valeria says the room layout is exceptionally well conceived. Tomorrow we will move all our things in. It will be good to have our own place. Finally, some peace and quiet. Once we had arranged all the furniture, Valeria, I suppose, decided we needed to paint the walls yellow. Yellow? Perhaps that is for the best. It will make it more cozy. Valeria's mother visited us. Tomorrow I shall paint the walls green. Um, why do you change your opinion about that constantly? Valeria heard some noises during the night. She woke me several times, but I did not hear a thing. This night I heard them. The walls shook. Same thing that Geralt already described. Valeria has learned from the neighbors that previously a powerful mage resided in this home. They all say he would summon demons, and his spirit still haunts its rooms. People will believe the most outlandish nonsense. Valeria has decided to move back in with her mother for some time, until I do something about the walls. I joke that perhaps I could simply repaint them, but I don't think she found that amusing. The plaster has begun to fall off. It seems to me that I heard a noise last night, something like a muffled roar. Valeria has returned. She found a buyer for the home, avoided any suspicion by claiming to be the mage's widow, selling off the estate after her husband's unfortunate death at the stake. Fool Count must think he has found himself an incredible bargain. So that was the journal from the previous owner, not the one that we're doing the contract for. 
There's a big scratch on the floor here, and the same painting we got from the dwarves uh, when we saved Dandelion. Scattered salt. Probably to drive ghosts away. <laughs> Pointless superstition. Okay then. No scratches, but salt. So let's go to the basement. Uh, there's a few things here. A little stuff I can loot. Hmm, not bad. Air flowing through this crack. There's something in there. Okay, maybe I should first open this door. Ooh, looting! Looks like mostly crap, though. Yeah, nothing useful. Okay. So let's uh, use R to blow this thing wide open. Oh god, more ruins below this house. So there's something behind that gate over there. Let's equip Quan and uh, yeah, I'm gonna save. Hmm. Okay. So is there an elemental? What's this? Not the root of any ordinary plant. Must be magic. Hmm. Okay. What's this? Hmm. Looks like a journal. Can we read the journal? Yeah. Okay. A maverick of Sorano's journal. That must be the mage that lived here before. When dealing with beings of this nature, it is most vital to achieve equilibrium between giving giving free reins to its giving free rein to its will and obstructing it with the fetters of servitude. A sagacious elementalist who has tamed the magic minion should not heed the sweet yet pernicious urge to unbind the being, for only harm will come of it. Why does he use capital letters everywhere? Wailing and gnashing of teeth will be the only result. Likewise, he who tightens his servant's yoke overmuch will gain nothing from it, for his enchained being will be to him dumb and dull as a lump of earth. That's incredibly hard to read. The key is to prepare a proper magic barrier, one whose effectiveness shall be backed by a crystal of power. This crystal is of the utmost importance. If it should break, the barrier shall fail. Yet worry not over much, for neither axe nor blade can harm it. A barrier thus secured shall serve as the minion's prison without unduly hindering its power. The ability to erect it properly, however, demands a high level of proficiency, the kind no mere superficial study or practice can provide. The bunglers and ne'er-do-wells of our profession need not apply. Right, sounds suitably pompous, must have Ducas make a clean copy of this first draft, prepare it for publication. Wonder where that Claude is, I sent him out for cheese and ink ages ago. An earth elemental, pretty powerful too, gotta go deep. Need to open the passage somehow. And he locked the earth elemental behind a barrier. It's also weird that Carol deduced from the text that it was an earth elemental because I didn't see. Oh. Holy shit. I can't open that, I presume. No. Okay, it's locked. So we need to find a way in there. So let's head into the water. And of course, the first side I take is the one that's not going anywhere. So let's head to the other side. This is actually a cool area, and there's a lever over here, so is that an... Okay. Is that it, then? Something clicked. Something clicked. Did that open the door over there? Let's go find out. Yeah, okay, it's open. I'm gonna need to swim around, I presume. So, Earth Elemental. Is it right? Oh no, there's the barrier. Okay. Uh, so, let's apply Elemental Oil. I think it's the blue one. Yeah, there we go. Apply Quen. And save. Doors slamming shut. Yeah. It is moving the Earth. Break its magic bonds. A few days more and it would have wreaked havoc all around. Uh, I think I can break... I need to find the crystal... Yeah, over here. And probably spook it with Igni as I did before. 
And then get ready, I presume. Oh, no Igni. Okay. The magic barrier stays where it is. Maybe art? Oh, shit. Yeah, there we go. Quickly apply quite because that's gonna hurt. Terrazane. Holy shitballs. This earth elemental is a bit bigger than the ones I've been fighting before. So let's put an earth sign around it as well. So it's a bit slower. Not that I can't dodge his attacks right now, but... Every little thing helps. There goes the shield. It's probably best to uh, put the, an Erden sign next to it, so I still have one active. Don't forget to use heavy attacks, because otherwise this won't do much. Oh, and there goes the arena. Let's place a, let's place a, a special earth sign. Okay, there goes the arena. My adrenaline is at full, so I should be able to quickly finish this thing off. Let's re put my one sign on. Come over here, you big baby. Let's quickly reapply some elemental oil and let's finish this. Explosion! Wow, that was freaking awesome. That's a big, a big fella. So uh, yeah, same strategy that we always use: put an urn sign around it, keep your coin sign up, heavy attacks, usually from the back. Don't do too much because you'll attack right through yours. And uh, well, that does it with a bit of help of the elemental oil as well. So loot, shards, claws, tissue, eye, mutagen, cleaver hood, and an. Earth Elemental Trophy. So, and now we should uh, collect our reward from Mr. Dysart, the uh, Count that bought this estate. Okay, calm down, Jesus. Doesn't seem to be any chests around here, so no extra loot in this one. So uh, I'll head back outside and I'll see you guys back at Mr. Dysart. So back in Novigrad, we'll head inside the inn here, the Kingfisher, and talk to Mr. Dysart. He's uh, on the first level here. I think we accidentally spoke to him when we were looking for the Gwent cards, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that's how we started the door slamming shot quest. So, hello Mr. Dysart. Yes? We uh, solved your haunted problem. House shouldn't give you any more trouble. A little renovation and it should be fit for you to move into. Truly? Why, the estate's price just spiked sharply. What precisely was the problem? Earth Elemental trapped in the cellar. It was just trying to get out. Almost demolished the house in the effort. <laughs> Far more interesting than a ghost, that's certain. The cellar you mentioned, is it an estate to be furnished? Hard to say. <clears throat> we shall see. You could probably uh, make something cozy out of that. And uh, farewell. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, another contract completed. Doors slamming shut. That's two contracts for this episode. 
So uh, if you enjoyed the episode, I'm gonna take a little break. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. Um, and if you haven't already, oh, there we go, another trophy. While I'm doing my outro, ashes to ashes, two trophies in a single episode of The Witcher. Look at that. So if you uh, really enjoyed the episode and you like my content, don't hesitate to press that shiny red subscribe button because I uh, really appreciate it when you do that. Appreciate it when you do that. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video stream. Goodbye.